سورت الکثر آیا نمبر 10 نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاوز بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لاست کلاس وی ڈیڈ تل آیا نمبر 10 لیٹس کنٹینیو فرام دیر سو ہیر وی ہیو بین فرسٹ اسٹوری اف کہف اینڈ ا کوئک ریویو فرام دی سٹارٹنگ وی ہیو سین امپورٹنس اف سورت الکہف لائک ایٹ ول ایلیمینیٹ اے لائٹ فرام ون فرائیڈے ٹو انادر and uh, first three ayahs you can memorize or last three ayahs or you can memorize ten ayahs there was different of opinion so here in ayah number 10 let's continue from ayah number 10 onwards mention when the youth retreated to the cave why do they, why do they go to the cave to protect their faith and they said our lord grant us from yourself mercy rabbana atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayyi lana min amrina rashada grant us from yourself mercy and prepare for us from our, our affairs right guidance so they are asking for the right guidance meaning correct our affairs for us and guide us to that which is best And these were youth, young men and group of them who left their home, who left their city. Why? Just to protect their faith. Because the king of that time had instructed that any person who believes, who renounce idolatry should be killed. People were being persecuted. So on the one hand, they didn't want to be persecuted. On the other hand, they don't want to compromise on their faith. So what did they do? They left and they went and they hide in the cave. And uh, compare uh, uh, ourselves with this youth. If Allah guided them, can Allah guide us too? Can, can He? For sure, our situation is not worse than the, theirs. What was going on in their life? What were their priorities? What were their interests? What was their goals? So you have, we have to look ourselves what we want to achieve. So you see when a person receives maturity, baluga, then his deeds are recorded and he will be rewarded or punished for those deeds. So just because we are young and by young I mean teenager or a little old, older than that doesn't mean that we have license to sin. No, we are adults. We are Our deeds are being recorded. Look at this youth. What are they doing? They are running to preserve their faith. And now what happens? Other people are running to preserve our faith. They are begging us to preserve our faith. Youth is the prime of our lives. It's the time when we have to be most productive. It's a time when we learn, when we do something. Because as a person ages, and the responsibilities increases, then what happens? The mind slows down and body becomes weak. So many responsibilities, you cannot do what you want to do. Right now you have freedom to do whatever you want. Therefore, value each day, each night. Don't wait for when you will turn 20 and don't wait for when you will be 30. Do it now. Do it right now. Prophet said, Allah will give shade to seven on the day when there will be no shade but his and of them will be a youth who was brought up in the worship of Allah. A youth person who spent their youth in obedience of Allah and who choose to obey Allah. And a person who is young and yet he chooses to obey Allah then Allah is happy with him. And in a hadith, we learn that this is a silsilatul hasahiyah. Indeed, your Lord is amazed at the youth in whom there is no sabua. And here, what is sabu uh, uh, is it is uh, in, uh, it is basically inclination. You know, to have fun, right? To pursue essential desires, to fulfill them. Uh, you could say a youthful passion, right? This is what sabua. And so the person who has such good control over themselves, you know at time where they could be partying and sleeping and oversleeping, they are making themselves read Quran. Allah is amazed at such people. Allah likes such people who chooses to obey him because you know exactly what temptation 
they are in this world how many distractions there are so for person to be able to put on hijab that allah uh, you know that's amazing near allah for person to be able to get up for fajr that's amazing near allah so never think that your effort is not recognized allah is watching you all the time if the people around us don't recognize our struggle who recognize allah's vision and we are doing it for him and here ayah number 11 fa darabna ala azanihim fil kahfi sinina adada so allah responded to their dua and saved them how that was uh, that we cast a cover to sleep over the years with the gave for a number of years and then we awakened them that we might show which of the two factions was most precise in calculating what extent they had remained in time it is we who relate to you to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam their story in truth indeed they were youth who believe in their lord and we increase them in guidance and we made firm their hearts when they stood up and said our lord is the lord of the heaven and the earth never will we invoke besides him any deity they would have certainly spoken then excessive transgression they themselves uh, you know recognize if they ask other than allah that is incorrect that is wrong so here we have seen the story of people of kahf when uh, you know ayah number 9 and 10 and also here we see how they make the dua and after that fadarabna ala azanihim therefore we covered up their hearing in the cave for a number of years meaning we caused them to sleep then they entered the cave and they slept for many years and summa basna hum then we raised them up from the slumber and one of them went out with the dirham silver coins to buy them some food as it was discussed in more details below allah says summa basna hum ya na nyalamu ayul hizbi then we raised them up that we might test which of the two parties and meaning the two parties who disputed about them ahsa lima labisu amada and best uh, at calculating the time period that they na uh, na uh, stayed here it was said that uh, this refers to how long they stayed in the cave in ayah number 13 and 14 we see we narrate unto you their story with truth truly they were young men and believed in their lord and we increased them in guidance and we made their hearts firm and strong when they stood up and said our lord is the lord of the heaven and the earth never shall we call upon any god other than him if we did we should indeed have uttered a enmity in disbelief they are themselves is saying this thing and we see in ayah number 15 and 16 these our people have taken for worship gods other than him why do they not bring for them a clear authority and who do more wrong than who invents a lie against allah and in ayah number 16 the young man said to one another and when you withdraw from them and that which they worship except allah then seek refuge in the cave your lord will open a way for you from his mercy and he will make easy for your um, for you the affair so when we see from ayah 13 to 16 First in ayah number thirteen, they believe in Allah, and they retreat from their people. From here, Allah begins to explain the story in detail. He states that they were boys or young men, and they were more accepting of truth and more guided uh, than the elders who had become stubborn. set in their ways and cling to the religion of falsehood for the same reason most of those who responded to allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam were young people as uh, for the elders of quraish most of them kept to their religion and only few of them became muslim 
so allah tell us that people of cave were young men mujahid said i was informed that some of them wore some kind of earrings and allah guided them and inspired them to fear him so they recognize his oneness and bore witness that there is no god but besides him and here was it nahum huda and we increase them in guidance from this and other similar ayas several, several scholars such as al bukhari and others understood that faith may increase that it may vary in degrees means it may fluctuate and that in uh, allah says wazidna hum huda we increase them in guidance and he said elsewhere wal ladina ihtadaw zadathum huda uh, here while as for those who accept guidance he increase their guidance and bestows on them their taqwa this is in surah number 47 and ayah number 17 and in surah number 9 and ayah number 124 as for those who believe it has increased their faith famal ladina amanu zadathum iman wa hum yastabshirun and they rejoice that they may and then here it says then they may grow more in faith along with their present faith this is in surah number 48 and ayah number 4 there are other ayas indicating the same thing it has been mentioned that they were followers of the religion of al masi isa uh, ibn maryam but allah knows best it seems that they live before the time of christianity altogether because if they had been christians the jews or rabis would not have carried about cared about preserving because of their differences and we have mentioned about the reports from ibn abbas that quraish sent a message to jewish about rabis in madina to ask them for things with which they could test the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they told them to ask him about this young man and about zulqarnain the man who traveled much and about the ru these were the question asked by whom about uh, these question asked to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam by jews rabis and this indicates that this story was something recorded in the book of the people of the book and it came before christianity and allah knows best all this question they asked to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam barabadna ala qulubihim isqamu and we made their hearts firm and strong when they stood up and said our lord is the lord of heaven and the earth here allah is saying we gave them the patience to go against their people and their city and to leave behind the life of the luxury and is they had been living several of the earlier and later uh, tafsir scholars have mentioned that they were the sons of the kings and the leaders of byzantium and that they went out one day to one of the festivals of their people and they used to gather once a year outside the city and they would worship idols and um, offer sacrifices to them they had an arrogant tyrannical king who was called bicanius and who commanded and encouraged the people to do that when the people went out to attend this gathering this young men went out with their fathers and their people and when they saw their people action with clear insight they realized that the prostration and sacrifices the people were offering to their idols should only be dedicated to allah subhanahu wa taala who created heaven and the earth each of them started to withdraw from his people and keep aloof from them the first one of them to move away on his own went and sat in the shade of a tree then another came and sat with him then another came and sat with them then four more followed suit one by one none of them knew the others you know they were not uh, friends or they were not familiar with each other but they were brought together by the one who instilled faith in their 
heart. They have the same faith, oneness of Allah. And as it says in the hadith recorded by Al-Bukhari with an incomplete chain of narration from Aisha radiallahu anha, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, souls are like recruited soldiers. Those that recognize one another will come together. And those that do not recognize one another will turn away from each other. So Muslim recorded that this is in Sahih from Hadith of Sohail from his father from Abu Huraira. From the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, people say that similar qualities or characteristics are what bring people together. You know, if you have same faith and you have same thinking, you believe in oneness of Allah, that's how it is, okay? So each of the young men was trying to conceal what he really believed from others out of fear of them not knowing that they were like him the one of them said oh people you know by allah that only one thing is making you leave your people and isolate yourself from them so let each one of you say what is in his case another said as for me by allah i saw what my people are doing and i realized that it was false and the only one who deserves to be worshipped alone without partner or associate is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who created everything, the heavens and the earth and everything in between. Another said, by Allah, the same thing happened to me. The other said the same and they all agreed. They all agreed and become brothers in faith. They adopted a particular location as the place of worship and began worshipping Allah subhanahu wa there. But their people found out about them and told their king about them. The king ordered them to appear before him and asked them about their beliefs. They told him the truth and called him to Allah. As Allah says about them, وَرَبَدْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إِسْقَامُوا وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَن نَدْوَا مِن دُونِي Ilaha, and we made their hearts firm and strong when they stood up and said, Our Lord is the Lord of heavens and the earth. Never shall we call upon any God other than Allah. Never is none implies an absolute and eternal negation. Meaning this will never happen. If we were to do, it would be false. So Allah says about them, لَقَدْ قُلْنَا إِذَا شَتَتَا And if we did, we should indeed have uttered an <coughs> enormity in disbelief. Meaning, untruth and utter falsehood. And here we see how like, These our people have taken for worship gods other than Allah. Why do they not bring for them a clear authority? Meaning, why do they not uh, produce some clear evidence and genuine proof of their behavior? And here it says, "Faman azlamu mimman iftara alallahi kaziba," and who does more wrong than who invents a lie against Allah? They said, by, but by saying that they are lying transgressors. It was said that when they called their king to believe in Allah, he refused. Who oh, king? And warned and threatened them. He commanded them to strip their clothing, bearing the adornment of their people. Then he gave them some time to think about the situation, hoping that they would return to their former religion. This was a way that Allah showed kindness to them. Because during the time they managed to escape from him and flee from the persecution. For the sake of their religion. This is what is prescribed in Sharia. During times of trial and persecution. A person who fears for their religion should flee. From his persecution as was reported in the Hadith. Soon there will come a time when the best wealth any of you have will be sheep. Which he can follow to the tops of the mountains. 
and the places where rainfall fleeing for the sake of his religion from persecution. In such cases, it is allowed to seclude oneself from people. But this is not prescribed, okay? In any other case, because by such seclusion, one loses the benefits of congregational prayer, especially Friday prayer. But this is a conditional, okay? This young man were determined to flee from their people and Allah decreed that for them, he says about them, and when you withdraw from them and that which they worship, accept Allah. Meaning when you depart from them and follow a different religion, opposing their worship of others beside Allah. Then separate from them in physical sense too. So here then uh, seek refuge in the cave. Your Lord will open a way for you from his mercy. Meaning he will bestow his mercy upon you by which he will conceal you. From your people and will make easy for you your affairs means he will give you what you need so they left and fled to the cave where they sought refuge then their people noticed they were missing and the king looked for them and if it was said when he could not find them that Allah concealed them from him so that he could not find any trace of them or any information about them. As Allah concealed his uh, Prophet ﷺ and his companion Abu Bakr as Siddiq when they sought refuge in the cave of Thor. Quraysh idolaters came in pursuit, but they did not find him even though they passed right by him. When the messenger of ﷺ noticed that as Siddiq was anxious and said, O oh, messenger of Allah ﷺ, if one of them looks down at the place of his feet, he will see us. He told him, O oh Abu Bakr, what do you think of two who have Allah as their third? SubhanAllah. Who is guarding? Allah is guarding them. So, they are in the protection. Here is comparing when uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu was in the Mount Saur, how he was saved and protected the same way the people of cave were protected. And Allah said, if you help him not, for Allah did indeed help him. When the disbelievers drove him, the second of the two, when they were in the cave, he said to the companion, do not grieve, surely Allah is with us. Then Allah sent down his tranquility upon him and strengthened him and forces which you saw not and made the words of those who disbelieve the lower while the word of Allah became higher and Allah is almighty and all wise. This is in surah number 9 and ayah number 40. So here till ayah number 16 this was the thing and from ayah number 17 and you might have seen the sun when it rose declining to the right from their cave when it is set turning away from them to the left. While they lay in the midst of the cave, that is from ayah of Allah, he whom Allah guides, he is the rightly guided, but he whom he sends astray for him, you will find no guidance to lead him. So here we see, talking about the location of the cave. And had you been present, you would see the sun when it rose, inclining away from the cave on the right. Meaning, these people, when they were sleeping in the cave, if you happen to pass by, you would see what they were completely undisturbed by the light of the sun. So they comfortably slept. Look at how Allah's help came. When it is said, passing away from them on the left, while they were laying within an open space thereof, that was from the sign of Allah. He whom Allah guides is rightly guided, but he whom Allah leads to astray, Never will you find for him a protecting guide. The one who receives Allah help, then he is successful. So, we were talking about the location of the cave. This indicates that the entrance to the cave faced north. Because Allah tells us that when the sun was rising, sunlight entered the cave. And the right meaning, the shade decreased towards the right. Ibn Abbas said, Ibn Jubair and Khatada, declining means leaning. Every time the sun rises on the horizon, 
it rays decline until there is nothing left in such a place when it rages is zenith so allah says when it is said turning away from them to left meaning it is entered their cave from the left to its entrance which means from the west this proves that we say it is a clear to anyone who thinks about the matter has some knowledge of the astronomy and the path of the sun moon and the stars if the entrance of the cave face is nothing would have entered it when the sun set and it faced the direction of qibla in this case south nothing would have entered in uh, at the time of sunrise or sunset and the shadows would have a lean neither to the right nor to the left if it had faced west nothing would have entered it at the time of sunrise until after the sun had passed its zenith and would have stayed until sunset this supports what we have said and to allah is the praise ibn abbas and mujahid and qatada said turning away from them means that it would shine on them and then leave them allah has told us this he want us to understand it and ponder its meaning but he did not tell us the location of this cave in which country on earth it is because there is no benefit for us uh, in knowing that uh, and no religious uh, interest that could be served uh, by our knowing that allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam would have taught us about it as prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i have not left anything that will bring you closer to jannah and keep you further away from jahannam hell fire but i have certainly taught you about it everything rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us so allah has told us about the features of the cave but he did not tell us where it is and he said and you might have seen the sun when it is rose declining from their cave malik narrated from zaid bin aslam leaning the right when it is said turning away from them to the left while they lay in the midst of the cave meaning the sun entered the cave without touching them because if it had touched them it would have burned their bodies and clothes this was the view of ibn abbas that is from the aya of allah how he guided them to the cave where he kept them alive and sun and when enter the cave preserving their bodies and allah says zalika min ayatillah this is from the aya of allah then he says min yahdillah fa huwa al muhtad he who whom allah guides he is the rightly guided meaning that he is the one who guided these young men to true guidance among their people for the one whom allah guided is truly guided and the one whom allah leaves as they will find no one to guide him so here uh, we'll stop here this is till ayah number 17 we did we'll continue in the next class